So in yesterday's video, I showed you how to connect with the Google Maps or the Google Places API to get links to the actual Google Maps page. So let me demonstrate that now just to show you what I did yesterday. And in the description below, I'll have a link to the video I made yesterday on how to interact with the Google Maps API. So let me start the server up and go here. And this is just to go over what I did yesterday. So my example yesterday was Bellagio. So once you search, it will call the Google Maps API and then it will populate this link with the page on Google Maps. And it shows the Bellagio here and it will show an image on the left hand side once it loads. So that's what I did yesterday. So I have the code here. And also in the description below, I'll have the code that I'm going to write in this video on GitHub. So I'll add that link down at the bottom. I forgot to mention that in yesterday's video, but I have the code for yesterday's video on GitHub as well. So here's what I have so far. Um, this is the code I finished yesterday. The key is whatever your Google Maps API key is. Mine is hidden, but I'll have that in the repository. Um, here's the HTML I had and the simple script. So in this video, what I want to do is instead of showing this link here, I want to show the picture that shows up down here. So if I were to search for Bellagio, instead of having to open this link, I would just have a picture of a Bellagio down here. So that's the goal for this video. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of all the detail stuff. So in the Google Place API, the details has different information that I won't be using in this video. So I need to use the place endpoint, or the photos endpoint. And it returns an image. So let me get rid of all the detail stuff. So details and place ID. That will go away. URL will go away. I'll return nothing for now. And then I'll get rid of the details URL. So now I want to add the photos URL for the photos endpoint. So let me see what it is here. It is here. So let me copy and paste that into my code. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the photo reference from this search JSON that I will get from the first API call. So this photo request takes a key, which is the API key, a photo reference, and then the max height and max width. Photo reference is the only thing that I need to get from the search API. So let me go back to search and let me see what it looks like in the response file. So it's going to be results and then in the array, photos, another array, and then photo reference. So let me call this photo ID and it's going to be in the search JSON results it's going to be an array like yesterday's video I'm going to take the first item in the array so zero then photos and then I'm going to take the first photo in the array and then finally photo reference so let me make sure I got all that right uh, results plural yes an array photos plural yes photo reference should have an underscore so now I have the photo reference and I assign that to photo ID so now that I have the photo ID I want to actually call the photos endpoint so before I do that I need to create a payload so I'll call this photo payload and it's going to be key because it needs the key I'll say max width and max height are going to be 500. I don't particularly care about that in this example. 
and then photo reference I believe is all one word and it should have quotes around it photo reference is going to be my photo ID variable so let me just make sure photo reference is all one word no underscore yes it's all one word okay so now that I have the payload I can actually send the request so I'll call this photo request and I'll send the request so photos URL and then params equals photo payload okay and now that I've sent the requests here I won't be getting a JSON back instead the photo response will be an image so it's binary content so instead of using this JSON method I'll just be using content so content returns the binary representation of whatever the request is or the responses so I just know that this so this is what I'll be using photo request dot content this is the image but before I can use that I have to process it a little bit so the first thing I want to do in processing it is find out what the image type is it can be a JPEG a GIF um, PNG it can be many things bitmap so I'm going to import this module image HDR and it has this what method or this what function that um, takes in a binary stream and tells you what type of image it is so let me import that up here so import image HDR and I'll be calling image HDR dot what the first argument needs to be a file name but it gets ignored if you supply a second argument I tried using no first argument and using just the name second argument but it didn't work for some reason so I'm just passing an empty string as the first argument and then the second argument will be the actual image binary so I'll call this photo type and then now that I have the photo type I want to construct a location and a file name for the image this probably isn't the best way of going about it but it is the simplest in terms of this video I don't want to get any more complicated with the the image location and the file name so photo name is going to be no static so I have a static folder in my directory I want to put all the images there so the it can be stored with all the static files and um, the template can read it or the browser can read it sorry so static slash and then I need to give it a name I'll give it the query name so if you search for Bellagio it's going to be Bellagio dot whatever the file type is so query plus a period plus photo type okay so just to recap so far I constructed the payload I sent the request to the Google Maps API which will return an image I determined what the file type of the image is and now I'm constructing the location and the file name for the image so now that I have the the name I need to actually write the file to my static directory so with open photo name and I want to write binary I'll call this photo photo dot write and then photo request content that's the thing that actually gets written 
Okay, so now after this gets executed, it should write the photo to this static directory. And the last thing to do is simply return something that can be placed in the HTML so we can view the image. I will just return an image tag. So image source, source is going to be photo name. So I'll return this. So that should complete the Python side of things. I have to adjust the layout slightly. So I don't want this link to be there anymore. Instead, I want an image to eventually show up. So I'll add this div that we're going to populate with the image using the script. So instead of populating the URL, image is going to get the data. And since it's not a JSON object anymore, I can just put the data there because it's HTML. So that should complete everything. So let me see if I have any errors. It's been reloading correctly since I've been using it. So let's try it out. Let me refresh and go for Bellagio again. I'll search. Wait a second. And nothing comes up. OK, so nothing gets written. Are there any errors? Image HDR. Yeah, so I didn't import the right, or I didn't use the right name in the module down here. So it should just be IMG HDR. So we restart the server, refresh, and search for Bellagio again. OK, so now we have a picture of the Bellagio there. And no errors, just a warning. Um, I'll search for something else. Let's search for Googleplex. My internet connection is really slow. So I don't know why Googleplex didn't work. Oh, there it is. It's just very, very slow connection for me today. But those two examples should have shown you that it does work. And it's pretty simple to take the image that's returned from the request, save it to a file, and then add it into the HTML. You see how I have these two images saved. And they were saved as JPEGs, even though I didn't explicitly say JPEG anywhere. It was determined by this image HDR. So I'll have this code up on GitHub. I'll put the link in the description below. If you have any questions about this video, uh, feel free to ask. I'll answer all questions. So thanks for watching.